Hi there, this is Stacy. Um, coming in to talk a little bit more um, about some of the characteristics of narcissism that definitely aren't uh, listed in the DSM, um, but that may provide a little bit of insight about where they're coming from. And uh, this will be part of a series of, of uh, videos on taking a more holistic viewpoint of narcissism. And what I mean by holistic is a more spiritually grounded, uh, trauma-informed, contextually based understanding of this. So really I have what I'm saying is like why they do what they do. Right, and how they think what they think. And it's not like we're going to get into their heads. But I believe that there are commonalities between all of us in our shared human experience and in the pain we all, um, we all go through. And so um, I'm hoping to, uh, that that's a bit of a framework for our understanding. One of the things that I see working with clients quite often is this ambivalence and confusion about how they're supposed to feel about their parent, their partner, their, you know, their manager, their, their friend, their child, like whoever it is in their life that's showing up with these toxic patterns. And so what I'm hoping is that um, this is going to provide, or this information is going to inspire a different level of understanding, but absolutely I want it to inspire a different level of empowerment. So for many, many years working with, <coughs> excuse me, adolescents and parents of adolescents, I've talked about something um, called the shame vulnerability, sh shame vulnerability vortex. And what I'm referring to is that window of tolerance for being able to be vulnerable and for experiencing shame. And anyone who has been a teenager, which is all of us, or who is parenting one, will know what I'm talking about. And because they can, when they come to that place of feeling vulnerable, they can explode or shut down and feelings of shame can be difficult to recognize and also tolerate. And none of us, right, do a great job recognizing our shame or knowing how to get through it. There is also a shame vulnerability vortex for absolutely full-blown NPT diagnosed narcissists, but those who have some traits and at various points along the spectrum. Um, I'm going to describe shame as the fear based experience of not belonging. And so with the survivor reference, the show Survivor, I'm referring to that fear of getting kicked off the island, right? So if we think back and, and reflect into our own shame-based experiences, what's happening there is, you know, we're fearful of being rejected or of not belonging. And this is a survival-based fear. We need attachment to be safe. We need belonging and connection to survive, right? The Correct me if I'm wrong, but the last few years during the pandemic lockdowns really taught us a lot about that. So this fear neurobiologically um, is happening in the amygdala in the hippocampus, so in the primitive parts of the brain, at the back of the brain, that connects into the central nervous system. So if, if we think about, you know, the experience of being an adolescent, you know, they're particularly like, let's say grade nine, there is a constant navigation of connection and belonging and a constant fear of not belonging. And I believe that this is very similar to the experience of someone who's narcissistic. And I would also say that they experienced this 
very, very early on, these feelings of not belonging in some way or not being connected in some way, not, sorry, here comes the dog. <laughs> Um, just that that uh, that very early wounding around not being um, not belonging. And Brene Brown, of course, talks about you know narcissism being shame based and and you know not being able to tolerate. Um, being ordinary, right? Having a deep need to feel special. And I think this ties in, right? And so, of course, you can probably guess that where I'm going with this is that if we can, if we can surmise that, um, you know, narcissists um, are stuck at a particular developmental level, this completely lines up, right? So again, this is not something I think they're conscious of about or aware of all the time. Um, this is more unconscious and in shadow, if I can put it that way. It's their shame is like their shadow self. Not that it isn't for all of us, but I think it's particularly true um, for people who are narcissistic. Vulnerability refers to not feeling that inherent sense of belonging and feeling hurt and feeling shame. So vulnerability is the fear of coming into a place of shame. And I'm going to add on to that um, the fear of losing that fragile ego-based defense mechanism that they have of perhaps needing to feel special. So for narcissists, this attachment, or rather the, the shame vulnerability vortex is part of their, what I refer to as attachment blueprint. So their very sense of themselves is created from this because as a child, they had to repeatedly defend against feeling shame, but more importantly, they had to repeatedly defend against the fear of rejection. Um, so you can imagine how living in the shame vulnerability vo vortex became a form of um, hypervigilance, if you will, or going into very primitive survival behavior, which operating from the back part of the brain means there are parts of their brain up here in the cortical areas, particularly the prefrontal cortex, where they would then lack self-awareness and empathy, right? So it's the same part of the brain that governs self-awareness and empathy, which makes perfect sense. My argument is that did not develop in quite the same way. So in some ways, this is, um, you know, something that we, we all hold in common. But it speaks to how and why this happened and where the deficit is. The deficit is in empathy and self-awareness, of course. Now we add on to this, you know, if we were little kids, right, or even in adolescence, if we were feeling scared or ashamed, not safe, we may very well have developed um, a different identity, a different ego identity, a different persona that we would might wear like a mask, right? Um, I remember wanting to be Wonder Woman and pretending that I was Wonder Woman, right? The Linda Carter version. <laughs> um, and so this is a little bit who narcissists are, you know, they, they develop this grandiose persona. And that's, and if there are more, if they're more on the covert end, um, you know, I think of, of those people as kind of being like armchair critics. 
you know, like the two guys on The Muppet Show who sat back and, and watched the performance and were always laughing and criticizing. But the, the, again, the, the, the defense mechanism on the covert side is um, that they stay safe by not trying anything or they try, try, stay safe by playing it safe and then secretly, you know, let everybody know that, that they could have done it better. And I really 100% think that at times, uh, narcissists, particularly those with NPD, can, can swing from a covert to, to overt um, ways of manifesting this. I've seen that happen. Um, and then, of course, like there are facets of personality, introversion and extroversion that feed into that. So my point is that um, the shame vulnerability piece is defended against differently, whether the, it's, it's, it's a covert or overt presentation, right? That makes sense. Um, it's going to look a little bit different depending on those traits. So what does this mean for the rest of us? Here, here's what my experience of this is. And I, I bet this would resonate with all of you too. They're, these are folks who are easily triggered into shame. Your inherent goodness makes them feel shame. If you make them look stupid in a meeting, this makes them feel shame. If you know something that they don't know, this makes them feel shame. If you're happy, this makes them feel shame. Your inherent goodness and creativity makes them feel shame. The fear of losing makes them feel shame. The fear of losing control. Again, this, you know, the covert overt characteristics factor in here too, because it's more obvious with an overt style than covert. Um, so they can feel shame, not be able to connect it into their own inner experience and very quickly blame you for how they feel, right? So I really wish I could get like a hands up to get a count on all of you who would have experienced this. Um, so in relationship, there is of course a very low window of tolerance for this, right? Like it's really hard for them to do. And um, there's very little capacity in the moment to see beyond themselves and what they're experiencing, which can really bring them into fight or flight responses, but also sometimes deep victim identity. And I, I'll t I'm going to talk in a different uh, video about the entitlement of the victim, right? So how all of this wounding creates entitlement. So just as a recap, um, this shame vulnerability vortex, which we all experience, is something that you will witness if you are around someone who is narcissistic. And if you're in a workplace situation and you encounter this, watch your back. All right, because they will go into some type of revenge fantasy around this and you will very likely be targeted about this too. So the boundary to keep in mind here is that no matter what, no matter what you're not responsible for how they feel, they are. I mean, it's unlikely that anyone's going to deliberately do something to make someone go into a place of shame. I hope not. That's different. But it is important to remember 
exactly what their experience is so that you can be, be very, very confident in knowing that you didn't cause this and it isn't your fault. And the place, so the place of compassion here is around, we all feel this and we all experience it, just it gets manifested in a different way. We have different levels of awareness. We have different levels of emotional maturity. We have different levels of emotional intelligence, right? And narcissists are operating, I believe, from a real impairment in some of these areas, right? Um, they, they go back into that very child part of themselves that experienced shame early, early on, right? And then they go on to reenact that at various different times in their relationships. So um, I would love, love, love to hear some comments on this. I was, you know, furiously writing this uh, earlier today. And I'm going to do a second video that really specifically speaks to the ways that narcissists cope with this shame. So what you might see them say or do, therefore what to expect, you know, whether it's in a family system, a workplace system, or in a relationship. So that's going to be um, a separate video. So be working on that next. So again, please write some comments, share this video, um, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I, I really, really, really want you to join me and um, some of the other beautiful people in the Inquire Within uh, Narcissistic Recovery community. So I wish you well and, um, and we'll connect soon.